I really, really enjoyed this film because it worked for me as the biopic of Ruth Bader Ginsburg for, like, for now, for this moment in history, because as Felicity said in that interview, you know, she, she's one of these rare individuals that she's become a legend in her own lifetime. And, you know, she is a part of US legal history, but she is also the pop culture icon. She is on T-shirts. She's got her own action figure. There's people out there calling her notorious RBG. <laughs> and so I think, you know, she is as close, I feel like, as we can get to a real life superhero nowadays. And so to have this as her origin story basically works so well. And I think, you know, if you want a complete, balanced, nuanced portrait, this is not the film for you. You could probably go watch the RBG documentary that came out last month. And that really covers her entire career from her journey from a law professor to the federal judiciary to her appointment to the Supreme Court, where she still sits today. But this is about the, the thing that where she first made her mark, which was this specific case. Well, she was a very integral figure in overturning gender discrimination in law. But this film actually looks at one single case, which was where her and her husband, Martin, who's a tax lawyer, um, argued that a man had faced gender discrimination because he had been denied a tax deduction for caring for his elderly mother because it was always the, always the assumption that the woman Wouldn't would fulfill care. the role. And yeah. so... That was really, that was Ruth sort of gaming the patriarchy because she knew that the all-male panel of judges were more likely to rule in favour of a man and so she could then use that case to support her when she represented women. And I will say legal speak is a foreign language to me. It is white noise when I hear it. And so I have to give credit to this movie for actually being able to take this very dense, complicated process, which was that the Ginsburgs had to go through and to reduce it down to the symbolic essence. Because this film is very much, it's about the symbolism. And I think that's what the director Mimi Leader saw in it. I think that's what's very evident from the film's script, which was written by Ginsburg's nephew, Daniel Stiepelman. And so, you know, it's not, it's not particularly balanced, not particularly nuanced, but it's a celebration. And it's a celebration of what she represents to people as this Wonder Woman-esque frontline soldier in the battle for gender equality. And I loved this opening scene where you see all the men arriving for their first day at Harvard. It's just a sea of drab suits. And then suddenly emerges the pair of bright blue heels. And, you know, it's it's Ruth. Ruth has emerged <laughs> parting the seas. And it's just pure. That's pure iconography. And it is later revisited in a way that I won't say, but it's revisited in a way that I found extremely moving. Because I think just to underline how much one person one woman can can change the world for the better and especially when you're working within a system that has been set up to make you fail I think that is it's inspiring I think if there's a way around it it's very inspiring and I also think Felicity I loved Felicity Jones in this role I think she was perfect I have to say as a Star Wars fan, every time I look at her, I go, <laughs> oh, it's Jyn Erso, it's Jyn Erso from Rogue One. But I think in this case, it actually worked really well because both of those characters have a very similar energy, which is this rebel spirit, but with a very sort of strong moral code. And I think what she's especially good at doing as an actor is that she can really nail the slightly bombastic line so in Rogue One there was that in the trailer there was that this is rebellion isn't it I rebel and then this one there's a, a moment where the judge says that the word woman does not appear in the constitution and then she leans into the mic and goes nor does the word freedom and just the way she puts the emphasis on those lines I just I feel very yeah. amped up when she does that and so I think not only she but I think you know she did have to do that slightly difficult Brooklyn accent, which she stumbles over a couple of times, but otherwise perfect for that role. I also loved uh, the casting of Army Hammer yeah. because I think he was very good at playing the supportive romantic husband that to be able to step slightly out of the spotlight like that. I think when you're dealing with a film which is about gender equality, you know, it's a nice flip on yeah. expectations, especially when you see the scenes of her coming home and he's there taking care of the children and, and, and cooking dinner. Um, and I think there were times in the film, I will say, they maybe went a little too far in trying to make Ruth relatable because there's moments where she's being very clumsy, she's knocking over things or she goes up to the podium and suddenly she she can't find the words mm. and the microphone go, does that thing where it goes static. Feedback, and yeah. 
which is, I don't think, apparently never actually happens. <laughs> but we just accept it. Creative if, license, we can add it on If there's feedback, you go, yeah, oh, yeah. someone's Ooh, nervous. No, that's Someone's nuts. nervous. But um, other than that, I think, you know, the film absolutely serves its purpose. Yeah. It's not particularly nuanced, it's not really balanced, but I think it's the right film for now and it was the perfect film for now and I very much enjoyed it.